Hi, this is Sabrina TV Band, and I'm making a video about using Obsidian to write a novel. There are a bunch of videos about using Obsidian for writing. This is kind of meant for someone who's never heard of Obsidian and is starting at square zero. So, uh, and it's also going to be a very focused video. Um, so let's get started. Uh, so basically, why would you use Obsidian for writing a book? Um, well, it's kind of simple once you get over the initial hurdle of using the software. There really aren't a lot of features, um, which is, you know, distinct from something like Scrivener, which is loaded with features that only some people will want to use. And so if you dislike having too many options, this is great. Um, and it's also free. Uh, everything I'm going to show you costs no money. And so if you just want to try something and you don't want to invest in something you might end up not enjoying, there's really no risk here. And so anyways, the reason I started using Obsidian um, is because I was using a program called Nimble Writer, um, which is good. But Nimble Writer, basically, you can move around chapters and you can have notes on your window next to what you're working on. But the problem is it doesn't get more granular than chapters. I want to be able to have chapters and then scenes. And that's why I switched to using Obsidian. So basically to use Obsidian uh, or to do what we're going to do here, you need to install two things onto your computer. The first is Obsidian itself. And the second is a thing called Pandoc. I'm not going to insult your intelligence by showing you how to download the exe files for both of these. You can do it yourself. And so anyways, um, let's just talk about how Obsidian works uh, kind of in basic terms. And so here I have a vault called Open World Games. Um, and a vault is essentially, I'm going to enlarge this. A vault is uh, a folder on your computer that you have all your files and so hold on here for a sec. So here is my vault um, inside of my computer's uh, file system. And here are all the folders up here that you can see on the side represented here and all of the notes that aren't inside of um, these folders are just little .md files. And essentially um, you have all these interconnected things here. These are mostly going to be irrelevant for writing a book, but if you want to use Obsidian for its intended purpose as a note-taking app, um, these will be useful to you. So for example here, uh, let's just go up to, I don't know, Saints Row franchise created by Volition. Um, here are all the games in the series, and so I can go here. And then I have these collected links for a nonfiction book I'm working on, um, just about uh, all these different games made by these different companies. Um, so here I have a page for Activision, I have all these subsidiaries, and you see the kind of graphical representation here, which is, this page is honestly kind of useless, <laughs> uh, but it's nice to look at and it's uh, rewarding, I guess. So. This is essentially kind of like a personal wiki on your computer. Um, but this is not really what we're here for today. Um, I probably should do my due diligence and just quickly explain. Um, in order to create these interconnecting links, you just put double brackets and then it creates a new note uh, based on what you put in there. So anyways, um, I finished showing you the open world games project vault. And so we're now going to create another vault. Um, so create new vault. I'm just going to do demonstration. Go to location. Um, I've already selected it here on my other window. So we're going to create this vault. And the first thing you're going to notice about this vault is that it's impossible to look at. So uh, we're going to go down here and uh, go to appearance and change it to dark mode. And obviously there are people who have eye problems where they need to use the light mode, but for most people, this is going to be the desirable choice. So um, 
let's just delete this. Uh, so essentially, this is stock Obsidian, and we need to install the plugins that we want. And this is actually really incredible, is if you're like me, um, I usually don't like using plugins because they're not, you know, maintained with the main program and stuff, and they can break uh, and whatever. But the thing is with Obsidian, um, the plugins are stored in each individual vault. And so if you want to use a plugin with every vault you have, you actually have to reinstall it every time. And it's saved uh, in here, in this .obsidian thing in this new vault we've made. And so you don't have to worry about plugins adding all this cruft to every one of your vaults. It's done on an individual basis. Uh, so that's that's really convenient for me. So. We're going to browse community plugins. The first one we need is long form. This is going to give us, uh, you know, the features that kind of make Obsidian good for writing um, books. And we're going to enable it. That's important. Um, and then we're going to want um, enhancing export, and we're going to install this. And so we installed that program called Pandoc earlier, and this goes into your software directory and uses Pandoc. Um, so if you didn't install Pandoc and you installed this, then it'll say you need to install Pandoc when you try to export something. And there is a plugin called Pandoc uh, in Obsidian, and you don't want that because it hasn't been updated in a long time. So anyways, we now have these plugins. We're going to want to go into long form, and we're going to want to turn on Show Scene Numbers and Scenes tab. Um, I personally don't see why you wouldn't want to use that, but, uh, you know, whatever. So we now basically have everything we need. So we're going to turn on long form here, and then we're going to get this files, uh, this folder icon and move it down here. And so we're going to create a new folder, uh, which is just Uh, demonstration, and we're going to right-click it, you know, following the instructions up here to begin, find or create a folder somewhere in your vault in which you would like to create your novel. Right-click it and select Create Long Form Project. You can have a multi-scene project or um, a single scene, and I mean, why would you even bother with a single scene one? So just here, demonstration. demonstration long form. And so here we have uh, this. And so the index, let me just, you don't want to touch the index in long form because this is really, you can mess up your project by editing directly in here. You want to interact with this uh, thing over here. So let's make a new scene, just chapter one. Scene one. Actually, you know what? Actually, we're kind of. <laughs> uh, I'm just, you know, you come here and you can reorder these however you like. And so in my uh, book I'm writing, my chapter one heading has nothing inside of it. And I put everything inside of these scene things here. Um, right, and so um, you have a project tab here and you have a word count and everything. And then you can come here to compile. Let me just enlarge this window. And you push compile and inside of your demonstration, uh, your long form folder, your project folder, you get a .md file neatly arranging everything. And you push here, export to, and then, uh, you know, open office is kind of a good one. Um, if you want to do more editing and sort of a more feature rich program, um, and then we're going to just export this to uh, wherever. And so on my computer, LibreOffice immediately opens when I export uh, something. 
And so here we go. This is the thing we made. And obviously, um, hopefully you have the imagination to see how this would work with an actual book. So um, uh, let's kind of get a little bit deeper into this. Um, so let's say you're like me and you write a kind of crappy version of a scene first, and then you go back and edit it. Um, just uh, ignore. Actually, you know, I delete the manuscript every time I finish exporting it, so you can just do that too, I guess. Uh, anyways, um, basically what I like to do to revise scenes is go C1.1 V2, and then I just move that up here. And what you can do is move this over here, and then in this window here, have the first version of your scene. And you can just work on these right next to each other and uh, scroll these around however you need to. And oh, wait, I just need to quickly uh, cut this in. Um, something that I do after I finish writing, um, let's just see this. Something I do after I finish writing the, uh, you know, the revised version of the scene is I get the old version and I take it out of the project folder and just put it into a discarded version of scene folder. So I can always go back to the old version to refer to it if I want to. Uh, but here you can see it automatically has updated the uh, list of scenes um, to just only have the new one. So when we export, it only has the revised edition. This is sort of really great. Um, something I love about Obsidian is that, you know, I usually have uh, my window is not full screen. I usually have one thing here, one thing here. And this all just scales really nicely. Um, and so it doesn't have the graphic user interface that requires you to always use it full screen or else you have to be scrolling around from left to right. Um, so that's perfect. And also, um, let's just say you want to have a note that you reference. And so let's just say characters, and then, you know, you essentially have, um, you can have your character note here, and then the actual thing you're working on here is reference. And obviously this is, uh, this is outside of the project folder, which means it's not going to export with the thing it's separate. And so you can easily reference notes uh, doing this. And so um, that's kind of using Obsidian to write in a nutshell. They're really, you just have these text files and this little thing here in this compile thing. And once again, you right click and push export too if you want to get that out after you've created a manuscript thing. And so let's kind of get into um, a few other reasons Obsidian is great, and I'm going to go back here and I'm going to open up my Open World Games Vault again. Um, so what are the advantages of uh, using Obsidian over most of our software? Well, for starters, the files made by Obsidian are human-readable and non-proprietary. So here's the Open World Games one again, and uh, I can just open this with Notepad. And this, it's uh, just a markdown file. Um, and as you can see, you can read this, it all makes sense. You obviously have the brackets here, they're not hyperlinked, but um, you know, a lot of uh, like Scrivener and uh, Nimble Writer both have these proprietary files that can't really be read by anything but the programs themselves. And so if you wanna get out of that ecosystem ever, Basically, you have to like, I don't know, export everything in a certain way, uh, which could be a really laborious process. But here it's just all conveniently um, already non-proprietary. So that's uh, incredible. And um, also, you know, this is literally just a folder on the computer. Uh, this vault here. And so what's incredible about that is uh, you can just put this into Dropbox or Google Drive or some other 
file syncing solution and um, it'll be across all your devices and as long as you get the same plugins set up and what have you, it'll all be ready on your ever machine every time you go back there. Um, and you can do that with your phone as well, um, your iPad, whatever. Um, and Obsidian does have a paid syncing solution that costs a few dollars a month, but you can just sidestep that if you want to. Uh, I've already mentioned that the window scales really well and that everything is done inside the same window. Uh, you can make tabs go out into separate windows, but if you're like me and not just as cluttery to you, you don't have to. And, uh, you know, you can install a lot of plugins into Obsidian that add a lot of new features, but really this is a very simple piece of software. Um, and it's uh, extremely just, there's no cruft, there's no bullshit, you know. And uh, this is not really related to writing a book, but um, for this open world project, uh, you can see I have these audio files here. And one of the great things about Obsidian is if you get a file and you just drag and drop it in here, um, it will actually copy that into your vault folder. Um, and so it's easy to transport. And, uh, you know, you can do this also with PDFs. So just, this is really great for like nonfiction writing. And by the way, I did say earlier, it doesn't make sense to use, um, long form with a nonfiction book. And actually it could, but the way I'm writing this book is I'm writing it one article at a time. So I don't need, uh, something that, um, something for writing something that long as a novel, but anyways, so yeah, um, this is just incredible, simple, easy to use, uh, and I love it. And uh, I really don't think there are any disadvantages to using Obsidian um, because, you know, it's free. Uh, the files are easy to move outside of the ecosystem if you need to. And yeah, it's just, it's everything you could really want, I think. Um, so I hope that helped, uh, and, you know, happy writing. <laughs>